my peoples. So I've been realizing I, I don't now I'm not tired to having to do this like 10 minutes at a time. But I think visually it's it, I like I want I want initially I want to prove like what you can do in 10 minutes. And if you kind of go back the last five sessions or six sessions, I guess in this case, you can see where I started from and just, it's just 10 minutes at a time, you know, getting to this point and think about like maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes and just putting a little more time into a certain project like this and see where you can get to. <clears throat> um, today's theme is going to be play. So I just, I just uh, attended a, a virtual summit on play. And this was for work, but also I think it pertained to just life in general. I think in most cases, any experience, like you kind of take it for your own experience. And, you know, I chose to be there. I didn't have to be there. I didn't, I didn't have to be there or I didn't have to attend. And I did. And um, what I got out of it, it was a play summit. So the idea being like, you know, you, you learn all these different modes or styles or ideas about about play and in the end I got a lot I got a lot, a lot out of it but I think the, the highlight was Dr. Stuart Brown um, this gentleman I couldn't tell you his 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 accomplishments but his presentation it, it, he, at least you know, for this presentation, for this summit, his whole thing was play in nature, how nature comes, shows up, in, uh, how play shows up in nature. <clears throat> so he showed a lot of examples of like animals playing and how that looks and, com and metaphorically or directly kind of how it shows in humans, what play looks like and the importance of it. And... And I like this, a couple things. I'm going to highlight a couple things he said. He said, the world is part pretend and part real. And he specifically said that for kids. Like, the world is part pretend and part real. And I like that, because I think that's how it is as adults, too. Because if you consider, like, <clears throat> the way we are as kids, it basically just carries on as adults. And there's this term called... Neotony, 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 N E O T E N Y, neotony. <clears throat> it's just the idea of stretching or extending your childhood as much as possible throughout your lifetime. And his whole thing was play. Like, as it's innate in us to play, it's a natural uh, movement. And to think, like, he even talked about it biologically, thinking, like, you know, play has stayed in our genetics. Like it's, imp it's stayed in the genetics of multiple species because it's become it's important to become a viable adult. You know, so that way you can learn how to work and rough and tumble and goof off. And and there's there's studies showing that play, you know, shows up later on in life as something that kind of makes you empathize and cooperate and and construct with other with people later on in life and he, he was he made the reference of the the shooter in texas the sniper who went to the tower and started shooting up people across campus along with other people who are who were mass killers <clears throat> that they lack play in their childhood and so he his whole thing was making sure like that we understand that play is super super important um, I work with young students so that's that's why I was at this summit and his whole thing was we're built to play we're built to play wait what is it I wrote it wrong. I took notes. 
but we're, we're, we're built to play. I gotta look back. <laughs> I put right here, I put built to play and built to play. <laughs> but there is a difference. Anyways, um, yeah, his whole thing was about play. And, and there's a lot of questions brought up about like how play looks like in adulthood. And he's like, well, it's up to you. You know, you kind of have to go back. And these are things I feel like I've been kind of preaching or at least kind of understanding, thinking like, yeah, yeah. like figure out how you played as a kid. If you have to figure it out, you know, most of us know what what feels good and what feels like play. But I think that's the process of it, just kind of going back to how it was a childhood. Because I hear a lot and I reference to this a lot that people tell me, oh, yeah, I used to draw when I was a kid. Uh, but I don't draw anymore. And it's like, well, I mean, as a kid, you didn't think about it. You just did it. And it would make sense to do it now. You know, at least maybe it, it, there's something to it, though. You know, if you do it now, because you did it as a kid, like it, you did it because for some reason it brought you peace or it brought you some sense of, you know, conf confidence, um, some, some self-esteem. But I hear that a lot. Like I used to do this when I was a kid, but I don't do it anymore. I don't have time. And his whole thing was like, you know, find that time, make that time to play. <clears throat> and and I, I think a big another big point that he brought up was nonsense and I like that word I like that word nonsense because it's very relative we can think of a lot of things being nonsense you know let's say if you're in a work environment like certain actions and certain uh, attitudes are nonsense and in life in general, like that's what play is. It's nonsensical. The idea being that a child puts on a blanket or a towel over their neck, they wrap it around their neck and they're they're a superhero. And you know, we can tell them, no, that's nonsense. That's not true, that's not true, that's not real. But we're not gonna do that to a young kid. You know, why would we do that to an adult? I mean, it makes sense, you know, it is in context, but the idea being is like, that's what play is. Play is nonsensical. Like you, you, you invent things, you push things, you, you sprawl, you sprawl, you, um, man, I'm losing all the words. I tend to do this recently. Like I'm losing words. I feel like I need to take some sort of supplement because I feel like I'm deteriorating mentally when it comes to my verbiage. I've never been a good verbiage person. I just uh, uh, adapt and adopt and I repeat. But lately it's been kind of, I've been losing. Spar, that's the word. Um, we just spar and he was talking about rough and tumble play. Like kind of kids who do that. It's very important, but like it's, it's kind of nonsensical, but it's super important, no? Like they just kind of do it, not out of anger, but they do it out of play. And he, he said that's very important for, for kids to do that and figure, you know, figure themselves out and their, and their push and pull and, but yeah. And play, I, I've always known play is super important because I play all the time. I think riding my bike is playful. Drawing is playful. Singing is playful. So I encourage you to play. Figure out what play is for you and do it and do it as much as you can. We're on our way. Have a good night. Peace.